Okay. Do you want so, to anchor us, Gisela? <laughs> Thank Go you, on. I will. <laughs> well, good evening and welcome to Christian Woman in the UK. You have the lovely Sedona and the lovely Naomi and of course Giselle with you tonight. And tonight we're going to be having a little discussion about how we juggle our life, our family, our jobs and our faith. And let's be honest, people, it can be a struggle. It really can be. Um, mm. And we've all got problems with spending time with God. Some mornings I hit the floor running and I could be maybe sort of two hours before, oh, I haven't prayed yet. Mm -hmm. When some people don't get to pray first thing in the morning or they don't get to read their Bible, uh, until later in the evening or even for a couple of days I know people tend to beat themselves up over it so mm. we're hoping that this little chat with us tonight will reveal to all of you listening to this that um, you're not alone we've all got struggles we've all got problems mm. and we're going to share our ways and our tips of hopefully might be able to help you all so ladies it's over to you too Let's go with Sedona. Hi. Now, Sedona, you've got three beautiful children and a husband, all to look after, and a full-time job. Mm. What's your struggle? It is. It's tiring. It's, it, it is. Um, it's tiring. But I think you've got to start from the from the perspective that everything in your life is an act of worship. Um, and if you live your life as an act of worship and you view everything as an act of worship, then it's not necessarily always. I mean, quiet time with God is 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 priceless, isn't it? But you don't always get the quiet time because somebody's always wanting something. Um, yeah. And sometimes the only quiet time you get is when you're in the shower. And even then, you're not I'm not normally alone as, as a toddler in there with me. <laughs> um <laughs> But I find that if you live your life as meaningfully um, as an act of worship, um, then you, you you serve God in everything you do. So if if you have at the back of your mind that as a mother, for example, you're worshiping in looking after your kids, you're worshiping God. You know the Bible says that children are a reward from God. Um, and so you're a caretaker to them. It's a service that you're doing to God um, by bringing up these kids in, in the way of the Lord so that when they're old, they won't depart from it. Um, that's an act of worship to the Lord, um, looking after them in his statutes and, and showing them the way of God. That's, you know, that's an act of worship. Being a wife is an act of worship. Um, you know, we all know that marriage is God ordained. Um, the hierarchy within marriage is God ordained. And, and um you know, even in the in, in, in the New Testament, I think it's the Corinthians or Ephesians, it says that women should submit unto their husbands as unto the Lord. It doesn't ask us to do it as unto our husbands, it asks us to do it as unto the Lord. So even in within your marriage, you're you know, that's an act of worship because you are submitting yourself to the to the laws of the Lord. It says Paul also says that slaves should work for their masters as unto the Lord. Now, technically these days, we don't use the word slaves, but no. you know, back then, if the, the equivalent back then is employees, you know, so employees should should work for their employers as, as unto the Lord. So if you view every aspect of your life as an act of worship, then not only do you start changing the rhythms of your life and how you live life, but you also start finding God in the everyday things that you do. You also start thanking God and worshipping God in the little miracles that you see. You know, you you um, accidentally open a hot oven and you don't scold your face and you're like, thank Jesus. But you actually really do mean thank Jesus because yeah. you know that in that moment, in trying to serve your family and doing 110 things at the same time, Jesus really has saved you from burning your face. <laughs> you know, you think little things that you probably wouldn't even have paid notice to. 
Mm -hmm. um, you start seeing God in the mundane of everyday life. And I was thinking about this actually a couple of days ago. And I said, isn't it wonderful? Because quite often God is more present in the mundane everyday life mm -hmm. than he is in the extraordinary times of life. Because, I mean, yeah. how many extraordinary times in life do people get? If, you, yeah. if you're blessed enough to be a mother, then you witness the birth of your child. Um, but, I mean, for some people, they'll never have that. But God really is in those tiny, minute details that are quite often brushed aside. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we were just to slow down or change the rhythms of our lives, we'll find that even our very lives, everything that we do, serving the children breakfast and doing it with a smile and, and, and telling them, God bless you, or, you know, that, that colleague at work that's really annoyed you and you really <laughs> have a sense of righteous anger that you really want to tell them where to go but you choose mercy and grace over anger that's an act of worship um, yes. because they see that and then that leads them to God I mean Gun was telling me um the very first person that showed her the way of Christian life was a colleague at work weren't you Ngun, that that yeah kind of pointed you to to the Christian life and made you want to live a Christian life was a colleague at work because of the way she lived out her Christian life. So I think if, yes, you know, time with God, I was saying this to, to Giselle earlier, I was listening to Christian, um, Premier Christian Radio, and this woman was talking about being a Mary or a Martha. And I thought about our Bible study a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. she said, a lot of us are Marthas. We just want to do yeah. things. And for a lot of us, we think, yeah, well, you know, if I don't do the shopping, the kids won't eat. If I don't do the cooking, the kids won't eat. Nobody will eat. If I don't clean up, the house doesn't get cleaned up. Um, but she said it's very important to recognize the fact that sometimes we just need to stop and sit at the, at the master's feet and be a Mary and just chill out um, and just take in. But for some people, that's few and far between. Some people don't get that opportunity. Some people go through busy seasons in life. Um, some people have young children. Some people have newborn babies. They're not going to get time to sit at the master's feet <laughs> no. some people are caring for loved ones um some people have to go to chemo three times three times a week but then in between yeah. sessions they're so wiped out that they don't have the time to sit at the master's feet or they just physically cannot sit at the master's feet but if yeah. they were to see their whole lives and their whole existence as an act of worship to God then that changes the way you live your life and the way you think about your life because then you start thinking I might not be able to sit for two hours and pray um or you know do a I don't know 40 day fasting and prayer uh, marathon I only have five minutes a day where I'm physically able to sit up and pray but in those five minutes I will enjoy it because I know that for the rest of the 12 hours when I'm awake I'm actively living a life of worship um and that changes the dynamic in how you live your life um but yeah so yeah and what do you think um it's really interesting to hear your perspective because obviously I don't have the same challenges as you you know sometimes I'm like man what must it be like you know <laughs> to be looking after all these people cooking I mean before I, I mean I've, I can cook for myself these days but you know there were times when that was just you know not a big thing for me but and I think sometimes, yeah, you just don't even, some days I'm just like, I don't have the energy, right? And I don't have three children, like, making demands or, well, it's their kids. They have to be dependent on you. But I think what is really important that I can see that, you know, someone like me could learn from you is that it's really important to see God in the mundane because we just live in a world that is just busy, full stop, whether you're single, I mean, I may not have a husband and kids to look after, but this is London. My commute to work is like an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. That's already time. So like Pastor Giselle said, yo, I'm literally some days, if I wake up late, I'm running out of this house. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I, I do in the morning is I usually listen to worship music. At least when I wake up, I, I tend to put on music. Sometimes if I'm running late, I'll just leave like the Bible, audio Bible playing. And I make time, I make use of my travel time. So when I'm on the bus, I listen to worship music or on the train. I can just spend that whole time just listening to music. And um, I do this thing on the underground. I usually read my, my Bible on the underground. 
So a lot of my commutes, because that's a huge part of my time, I use it for that sort of stuff. And now at work as well, I'm beginning to like, if I have a bit of time at work, I listen to sermons. So um, it could be during my lunch. It could be if it's not so busy because in our office, you can listen to stuff if you want. So it's kind of an informal thing, but I'd rather just listen to a sermon. Um, so I, I think a lot of my, my, my work time, I endeavor to use some days. Um, I'm a nurse, so some days it's so busy. There's just no time to sit down and do that sort of stuff. But whenever I can, I do. So majority of the time when I can actually say I have like quiet time with God is when I come home where I pray either with my prayer group or I pray by myself. Mm -hmm. But um, like you said, I think the one thing that I really want to learn, because I think for me, I'm kind of like in that zone. I'm listening to music, I'm praying, but it's nice to observe God in the mundane. And I think it's it's not something that I've really done consciously. Yeah. But when I think about it now, particularly working in a hospital, it gives you the opportunity to appreciate a lot mm. about what God can do. You know, gives you the opportunity to, to, to appreciate miracles. I mean, I've seen mm. things in hospitals now that, you know, Somebody will say, okay, yes, medical science and all that stuff, but I've literally seen things that recoveries that people have made that, you know, okay, it may be science, but let's just say science was the catalyst for the miracle. Mm. So it's it's um, something that, yeah, I think I would need to appreciate more. And what's interesting is that recently, I've just been coming across very interesting people, you know, who come with all sorts of issues. And I think one of the things that has made me really realize is that it's important for people to have God in their lives and to have prayer. So, yeah, I think also, as like you're saying, part of worship is compassion, right? Mm -hmm. Being compassionate towards people, trying to put yourself in people's perspectives. And even if you can't preach to them, pray for them. So I think for me, it's looking at how I can use my job to yeah reach out to people more and be more sensitive um so yeah it's it's i think the cross point i mean i have a bit more time than sidoni for example so back in the day i used to come home you know i would burn easily to us bless you to bring so yeah yeah my days are gone or where i could have sat for two hours through the day or at night to pray uh, because I remarried back in 2014. Now, prior to that, when I was single, there was only me to look after and I was able to come into the house and have my hour or two hours to pray and read the word of God. Then mm -hmm. I got married and my ministry, what started off as a part-time ministry has now really gone on more to a full-time ministry. And Okay. I just can't say no to people. I really can't. <laughs> you know, I plan that like, I could I could go to bed tonight and I plan to get up in the morning at uh, maybe six o'clock, take the dog out for his bathroom break, make a cup of coffee, come back to bed, and I'm going to take an hour or two hours and sit in bed. That's my office, and uh, I'm going to pray and read my uh, a devotional and read the Word of God. And I'm going to do all that. I'm going to do that for two hours. But then I'll get a message or I'll get a phone call. Somebody needs to speak to me. Somebody needs something or whatever. And I just can't say no. So it's not that God's put in the back burner, but he's put in the back burner. So he is till I you know, deal with other people and get around to him. Like, bless him, my dear husband. He just goes off in the morning. So he does. And he does his own prayers <laughs> and does his own things because if he was to wait for me to pray with him in the morning, he probably wouldn't get praying until like three or four o'clock in the afternoon. So it's, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I think really, you know, God's with us in all those times. God knows that, so Donnie, you've got children to look after. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, I was never able to have any children. So I, I, I don't have any children to distract me, but I do have other things. And, uh, I'm running about and you're doing things for the ministry and things. And as you all know, it's a non-denominational independent ministry. So um, oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's totally self-funding. Um, mm. 
So there's oh. things to do, like your card book mm-hmm. sales to go to and uh, fairs and fates and things to organize to raise mm-hmm. funds mm-hmm. for it. Um, so it's, 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 it's all work and it's all, and it's all good work. And so I love, I love the, the, the quotes and the books written about Smith Wigglesworth. I just love Smith Wigglesworth. And I love one of his quotes is he was asked at one, one time, how, how long does he pray in the day and, or in the evening? And his reply was that my prayers rarely last 10 minutes, but rarely do I go 10 minutes without praying. And, oh, wow. And I, I think really sort of, you know, I love a wee snippet prayer. Like if I'm driving down the road or something and an ambulance with the sirens and the blue lights and all flashing go past me, I pray for the first responders and I pray for the medical mm. team at the hospital and I pray for the people in the ambulance or person in the ambulance and I pray for their family. And if they don't know Jesus, this is Lord and Savior your life, bring somebody across their path. That's going. It takes like two minutes to do that. So really, mm. when you when you look up your wee prayers or you think about your prayers all throughout today, uh, and as you said earlier, so don't like you know, things that sort of you know, like even when you just open the oven door and you don't burn your face. You're driving down a road and for that. you get a notion you don't want to go that direction. You want to go someplace uh, else mm. and you go only to find out there was a disaster or something down that way. That was God. Very that was God yeah. So when I hear mm-hmm. about that, I go, thank you, Lord, you protected me. Um, yeah. So, and yes, so don't it, you're absolutely right. You know, Everything we do is to be an act of worship to God and the way we look after our children, the way we cook our food, the way we you know, present ourselves to everybody. Because, and I was, I'd love to hear Naomi that you actually watched a, a work colleague and that's what led you to your faith. Because I love the old analogy that um, as Christians, we have to be careful because we could be the only Bible a lot of people are ever going to read. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we, we that's really- so true. Yet we really should be careful in the way we act and the way we talk and you know, and the words that come out of our mouth. You know, I I don't like negativity. I won't let people be negative around me. And they start being negative. I say, no, nope, that's it. No negativity around me. No, that's being positive. Mm-hmm. And because we do have power of you know, life and death in the tongue. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah it, it, it is hard to get time to physically sit at his feet and lean in on him and breathe mm-hmm. and just hear that heartbeat of heaven. It is difficult. But I think, you know, he knows, he understands. He and does, doesn't he? And he gives us grace for every season. So quite often, I'd, like, I'll look back and think, oh, my goodness, how did I survive two children? And then now I have three, and I'm, and I'm sure I'll look you. back in 10 years and think, how did I survive <laughs> three children? Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. but um, it's quite it's quite interesting. He will give us, and he understands the different seasons that we're in, um, because he's um, orchestrated that and he's put us in those seasons, um, mm. and he'll give us grace for those seasons. But Goom, what you said, that's a really really good point because I don't think a lot of people appreciate the power of audio messages um, and how much you can actually take on that. A lot of people like background noise when mm. they're going about their daily. And business as for a lot of people there's a tv in the background yeah. um mm-hmm. or music in the background mm-hmm. but like you say how about you switch that up because that gets soaked yeah. into your subconscious mm-hmm. um, yeah. more and more now i've been listening to audio my kids call them jesus books but like audio christian mm-hmm. books <laughs> mm-hmm. um and i just have that playing in the background and i I'm not always listening to it, but every now and again I'll hear something, mm-hmm, something and that will resonate, and I'll be like, "Oh, that's interesting." Or I'll have a sermon playing in the background, mm-hmm. um, but rather than having, I don't know, the news about the latest disaster going on somewhere the, in the oh, world. News is the world. Yeah, you know, how mm-hmm. about having some edifying messages in the background? So for mm-hmm. a lot of busy people, um, they can find that commuting time. It's a good time to listen to audio messages or sermons on youtube on the go um cooking time time you're cooking or cleaning if you have Mm -hmm. that in the background that's again another time to get stuff soaked up into your subconscious um Mm -hmm. and 
And what I also find as well is just take a notion, um, uh, like an idea, and and mull over it. So sometimes stuff gets dropped into my spirit, and I think about it a lot. Um, but sometimes I just think, I wonder what the Bible says about forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And I would think, okay, for forgiveness to happen, there has to be an offence. Then I think about the offence. So there's certain offences that I think, this is just an example, there's certain yeah. offences that I think are unforgivable. If so, why do I feel that way? And then I start to question mm-hmm. my own heart and my own motives. And then I work that way outwards. And I think, okay, for forgiveness to happen, there has to be a forgiver and there has to be somebody that's receiving that Mm -hmm. forgiveness. So I look at it from their point of view and say, okay, Mm -hmm. as the forgiver, what do you need to do? And what does the Bible say about that? And then you just, and then before you know it, I'm sitting there in the middle of the night thinking, oh, okay, I must look up what the Bible says about, you know, forgiveness. And I remember thinking at one point, I was talking to him about this, there's a whole series I've started doing on this, which I haven't finished, God help me. and but what struck me one night was as I was thinking about this, my mind got drawn to the passage of the Bible where Jesus says you have to forgive somebody seventy-seven times, seven times, and that like <laughs> that number absolutely blew my mind because my kids are at the age now where they're learning time tables in school, right? <laughs> and typically, when you get to twelve by t- twelve times twelve, that's a big number for, for, yeah. for, for yeah, a exactly. seven-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> but that number 77 times 7 that absolutely blew my mind because that's a that's a big number um, that is and and i think at one i think in in one of the gospel jesus says a day or something um that's my 139 times who's forgiving somebody for 139 times exactly <laughs> <laughs> you have to allow that person to offend you yeah. 500 <laughs> no man 39 <laughs> times <laughs> but again it's just little things like that in the everyday mundane I'm thinking kids Mm -hmm. times tables and then just the enormity of that number and I'm thinking by the time you've wound me up seven times forget 77 by the time we've got (laughs) to seven times I'm a saint to have forgiven you that (laughs) you think about you're bringing up a child they're a child for a long time right and yeah with a parent's child that's a different dynamic isn't it and that's interesting though because you say that because if we think about the parent child dynamic then we've got to think how wonderfully gracious and forgiving god is Mm. because like you're saying them if we who were earthly sinful parents as christ says if you who are sinful wicked people can will not give your child stone if he asks for bread or you know how much more your heavenly father who is good so if we oh, as earthful exactly. sinful parents we can forgive our kids can forgive our kids that much how much more our good perfect heavenly father can forgive us Amen. but i suppose what i'm trying to say is in the everyday mundane that is the times tables that i practice with my kids and when we get to 12 times 12 it's normally a big number <laughs> when i was thinking about forgiveness seven times seven seven times struck me like an enormous number yeah yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. But again, I was able to, like you say, appreciate God's mercy and God's forgiveness mm-hmm. because that's, such a, good that's a big number. Yeah, you know, and, and it's just finding that. in And, and I think also there was a lady in, in the group that said this to me. And, and I think I was um, I was having a really, really bad day and I was complaining about something. And she said to me, she said, Sidoni, just appreciate it because these kids are only yours for such a short amount of time she said yeah. you know in the old days they used to say 18 but these days even by the time they're 16 their opinions are formed and they want to break yeah. off and do their own thing you're almost out of your house yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. You'll be she, missing said, these days. You'll, mm, she said to me appreciate your season she said for every season that you're in try to appreciate it because you will be out of that season so quickly um, that you want to be able to look back and not just remember the telling offs, but also be praiseful and thankful for the time that you had. And um, and I must say, like for single people, like people often assume that you have a lot of time in your hands. And I know we cracked a bit of a joke about this earlier. But the reality is that you don't. <laughs> I don't. You, you no, don't. because you know what? We live in, like I was saying, we live in a world that is just busy, full stops. Yeah. Mm. So things are just packed into your life, whether you're single or not. 
So you have stuff, you know, I wake up in the morning, I have to commute to work, I have a busy job, I come back home, then I have to find myself something to eat. This is why I cook during the weekends. And then I'm like, okay, I have prayers to do. Now I've started doing a course, I have to make time to study. So there are there are things that, you know, everyone has. And, you know, like you said about appreciating your, your seasons, I am so grateful for this season because I'm like, mm. when I look at sometimes like people who have kids and stuff, of course, like, thank god that's not me i can love them and give them back <laughs> man i don't know i quite you know it's funny because sometimes something people have been able to lie have a line on a saturday right mm-hmm. men, I'm what's that <laughs> yeah because i remember once going to visit my niece and she was probably like six years mm-hmm. old and this child i'm trying to sleep she just comes and stands over me at about six in the morning and then I open my eyes. I'm like, okay, what's going on? She's like, oh, she likes some breakfast. I'm like, what do I have to get up at six o'clock now? You know? <laughs> so that gave me a sense of what parents go <laughs> through, right? And you don't have a choice. You have to do it. So mm-hmm. I think, yeah, I love, you know, it's great that parents do what they do. I'm glad people don't neglect their children, <laughs> <laughs> you know? But I think for me, in the state of mind, obviously, if I had kids, it'd be different. And I think mm. it's something that I would like. But for this season, I'm taking every so advantage. <laughs> mm. No, but well, that's I'm important. Not lie. I love it. I love the fact that I don't have to, you know, on a Saturday morning, I can sleep. You know, mm-hmm. I like that. I like that I can do things without people necessarily depending on me. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. There will come a time when that will be different. And I, I, I would appreciate that. But for now, no, there are so many advantages, you know. Mm, yeah. Mm. And isn't it wonderful, Giselle, that you have the time to commit to to full-time ministry as well? Because that's just again something that you probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have if you weren't in this particular season mm. of life. Um, you would have had that longing and that calling. Um, but you wouldn't have had the time or the resources because you know you'd be pulled in, in all different directions. And and um because your husband's so understanding and and you know yes. so accommodating of of who you are and where you are in life that mm. makes it easier for you um and again you know there are people who are on their second marriage or on their third marriage um but that in itself can be a blessing can't it because you they could be in a second marriage or a third marriage that's more accommodating of their gifts and their service and their acts of service to God whereas perhaps maybe the first marriage wasn't um and that's just I think it's wonderful that you're able to to commit the amount of time that you can to ministry because it is time I mean I don't do it full-time and it is time consuming and the amount of people that message me going yeah I need this and I just can't talk yeah. right now I'm trying to put the baby mm-hmm. to sleep <laughs> I know I know Michael bless him he really is he's he, he is absolutely fantastic and when he and I met he knew right from the get-go that God came first in my life mm-hmm. and he would come second well maybe third because um no maybe fourth because I had a cat so there's God my cat me and then possibly Michael but then we got our dog four years ago we got a dog so now there's God the dog the cat me the ministry so he's what six now (laughs) the housework and then Michael's maybe sort of way down six or seven he is he He's a brilliant support. He really is a a brilliant support with the ministry. Um, And yes, I am blessed to have him as a husband. Don't tell him I told anybody that. Please, that's a big (laughs) secret, okay? But, um, and he he is my uh, third husband. You know, you you ladies know that uh, way, way back long, long, long before I became a Christian, I left my first husband and he has remarried. A man and uh but then I met and married my second husband and it was a, through the accident that I came to God I was him in two and a half years he was in hospital before he passed away and then when I came back to Northern Ireland that's when I met Michael and oh, you know, I come from Northern Ireland to Scotland uh to marry a man an Englishman living in Scotland so you know, <laughs> that's it so neutral ground for both. It's, it's a neutral ground then because he's English, you're Irish, so you're in 
Yeah. In a country that's really neither of yours. So. Ex exactly. No, exactly. No more advantage for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> hello, hello. He's he's been living here in Scotland, I think, about thirty-one years now. So uh, oh, I, I, I think he's all this got, and he's still got a gorgeous English accent. He's he's a, a from Hastings, so he's still got that lovely English accent. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. yeah. So, so I, I am blessed and it means I can put a lot of time into to, to the ministry. And you know, people laugh at me downtown because the biggest supermarket we have in town is Morrison's. And I'm expecting Morrison's to charge me rent one day because I preach to people in the aisles. You know, I pray for people in the shopping aisles. I oh, minister to people. Yeah, really seriously. I'll see someone sort of you down in the dumps and whatnot. And I just go up and speak to them. God, God sometimes directs me to people. Go and speak to them. Okay, right, I'm away. And I'll go go and find these people and speak with them. Before you know it, they're opening up to you. And you're, I ask, can I pray for you? Sometimes they let me pray there and then. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes no pray in your own time. And I'll pray in my own time. So, you know, we can, you know, even in sort of in our everyday mundane things like grocery shopping, mm -hmm. we can still glorify God. We can still mm -hmm. pray for people. Um, mm -hmm. If the people don't want to pray for them there and then, uh, when I leave them and I'm still going out around getting my groceries and things, I'm praying away for them. Sometimes yeah. if people won't stop and speak with me, I still pray for them. You know, so we do. I. I believe we pray an awful lot more throughout the day than what we give ourselves credit for, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's if true. You, yeah. Because yeah. prayer is not here, necessarily just sitting there mm -hmm. in a quiet room, yeah. hands think, knees on the floor, hands together, is it? No, <laughs> no I mean, that's, that's the classic, isn't it? And to be fair, um, I kind of, you know, when you have that time to sit down and pray, I actually really like it. I think as much as it's a communication with God, for, for me, it's an actually really pleasurable experience. It's almost like I just sit here, like there will be times when I'll just put music and I'll just be like, I wish I could just stay here forever. So it's a nice thing. Like, I love the comfort right, of being in this nice place. But like you said, sometimes you don't have that kind of time or sometimes, and also there are times when that won't really work. I think sometimes your heart just, pray, you know, like, have you been in that situation where you don't even have words? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's your heart that prays for you. So I think sometimes it's also important for us to know that there is no one specific way to pray. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, what you're really looking at is a relationship with God, right? If if you had a father that you love, you there are many ways of asking if you're gonna talk to your dad. You could text your dad, you could phone him, you could say, Okay, dad, let's I'm coming. Let's if you've left home, you can be like, Okay, I'm coming over on Sunday, we're going to dinner. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the same thing with God or sometimes I don't know if this happens to you you know how if you have a friend or you know if you saw like a funny thing on tv or whatever that you know they'll laugh you quickly text them right mm -hmm. I think sometimes it's the same with God mm -hmm. where maybe something in the mm -hmm. bible hits you or maybe not even anything in the bible it could just be something that somebody does mm -hmm. and you think it's hilarious and you just laugh and you say to God look like did you see that so I think I also like to without you know like watering down the image of God. Mm. I think it's also important for us to, to realize that you can have this kind of cool father-daughter relationship with God where sometimes you just talk to him. You may not, it may not be like a serious prayer. You may, you may be complaining about something that you're not happy about. You may mm. be asking his advice on the plan, but it's, you, you, you always have to get down on the floor you know and say oh lord you might just be like oh god you know i'm thinking of applying for this new job what do you think you know here are my pros this is what i think but yeah. what do you think mm -hmm. so i think for me i talk to god very like that like sometimes i speak mm -hmm. almost as if i'm talking to a father or a friend yep. mm -hmm. and for me it, i find it a very good way to communicate with god mm -hmm. and also it's, it's important isn't it because he's, it says in the bible that he knows our needs yeah. And he knows the thoughts of our hearts even before we come mm -hmm. to him. So mm -hmm. he loves mm -hmm. hearing from us, but that's it. That's, you know, it's, we're, we're coming to him because he wants to hear from us, not because he needs to hear what we have to say to him, yeah. because he already knows the thoughts of our hearts. Exactly. Exactly. He already knows what's going on in your heart. He already yeah. knows what you need exactly. and what you want. Yeah. And he knows what he's yeah. going to give you when you do come to ask for it. But he just wants you to come to him. He just wants to have that place yeah. 
pleasure of having you in his presence. It's not necessarily because he doesn't know you're going to surprise him with anything you come up with when you come to talk. Exactly. You're not, you don't have, we don't have the ability to surprise him. We don't have the ability to come to him with anything new. Um, He knows what we're going to say. He knows what we're going to ask for. He knows what we're, he knows before we even vocalize it or verbalize it, he knows. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's more really for our pleasure because we take comfort and pleasure in being in his presence. And he takes mm-hmm. pleasure in us being in his presence. So it's really more for us than for him. And because he already knows. So he just wants us to come and ask for it. And exactly. be like, okay, well, I know what you need and I know what you want. And I know what I'm going to give you because I know what's good for you. But whilst you're here, how about we just chill out anyway for a few minutes? <laughs> exactly. exactly. And I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to hear Naomi say that you, the, the way you talk to God, it's like you're talking with a friend. Because that's what I tell a lot of new uh, believers when they say, I don't know how to pray, how to pray. I say, well, you know, pick up your phone. How would you call a friend? You know, would you just, you call up your friend and say, hey, how yeah. are you? Uh, just just thought of ring to find out how you are. Talk to God the same way. And yeah, you know, absolutely. Okay, God is the creator of the universe. You know, he holds everything together. He doesn't need us to ask him how he is. But I do mm-hmm. like every now and again, just to stop in my tracks and go, Lord, how are you doing today? Do you know that's a great tip? I don't think I've ever asked God how he is. That's terrible. <laughs> no, because it takes the focus away from you, doesn't it? It takes the focus away from me, 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 yeah. me. I want, I want, I want. I love it. You know what? I'm going yeah i think it's because you know it's funny though, because like you said, when you see God as a father and a friend, I was telling Sidoni, like when I look at some audacious prayers that I prayed, right? Where you sort of going to God, feeling all right about stuff that you had no business doing in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> and that is probably like this. If I strike you now, I don't even know what happened. Like you're just gonna die. So let's but I think when when you look at how just how much God opens the way for you to talk to him about mm. everything. It just shows you the level of mercy because even when we have prayed in ways that we shouldn't pray, we didn't die, right? Okay. And also, it's it's it just gives you a sense of who he is and how amazing he is. I think, and amazing he is. He really is amazing. Okay. Well, ladies, has anybody got anything else to say, or shall we close there? No, because We're because. Not Right. I'm yeah. I'm I'm thinking about the length of the videotape that people are going to have to listen to this. Yeah, exactly. So let's <laughs> let's end in prayer. So yeah. shall we I'm close in prayer? Sit yeah. down. Like you 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 take it away with prayer, my dear. Okay. Oh dear heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share one another's lives with our fellow sisters. Thank you, Lord, for the tips and um, the pointers and the way you open up our lives to each other and, and for your pleasure, really, Lord. We ask, Lord, that we would have helped to edify somebody today, that would have helped to edify each other, that we would learn from each other and, and perhaps use one or two of these um, tips or pointers that we have learned in our own lives. Help us, Lord, to constantly live a life that is of service and worship to you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for each and every one of us and and for every season that we're in. Give us, Lord, a grateful heart that we will always be thankful um, in whatever season we find ourselves um, and be grateful, Lord, for for everything that you are doing and you have done for us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for Ngum. Thank you for Giselle. Thank you for myself. And thank you for all the lovely members of this group, Lord. Help us to continue to be a pillar of strength um, for one another and to one another. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace and your mercy until we come again to you um, in wonderful fellowship with these fellow sisters here. But please keep us um, in your mercy and in your goodness. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 And sisters of the Christian Women in the UK group, as Sister Sedone said, that we hope that you all get something from this little video of ours. And we... I'm looking forward to coming back to do our next one, ladies. Uh, maybe yeah. same time next week, same place, and yeah. uh, we'll we'll do we'll do another one. Uh, yeah. So, l- ladies in the group, we really do hope that this blesses somebody out there, and we're always available uh, for questions. 
uh, just leave comments in the comment box or private messages, whichever way you prefer to do it. And we are here for you, ladies. We really are. So until next week, may God bless you and keep every one of you. And shalom. Mm. Good night, everyone. Bye -bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye -bye. Right.